My name is Sam Vakni. I'm the author of Malignant Surf Love, Narcissism Revisited. Most spray shooters are loners. They are either schizoid with deficient interpersonal skills, or paranoid, or even paranoid schizophrenic, psychotic, and delusional. The dysfunction of spree shooters is all pervasive. Their family life, career, romantic relationships, professional and material accomplishments are all adversely affected by their mental mayhem. Spree shooters feel excluded and shunned, and are profoundly ashamed of and frustrated with their inadequacies, and with their sadistic, self-destructive, suicidal and self-defeating inner judge the inner introjected voices or narrative that are carried forward from early childhood abuse and trauma. This frustration builds up and results in pent-up aggression, which ultimately manifests as furious, uncontrollable rage. The typical spree shooter is in love with all things violent, guns, the military, police work, virulent racism, and crime. Since spree shooters have no one to share their emotions with, these tectonic and volcanic shifts get shunted, they get displaced. In other words, when the spree shooter seeks to explain to himself why he is so angry, and why he is so angry so constantly, he blames it upon his ultimate victims and their behavior or idiosyncrasies, not upon himself. Members of despised minorities Roma, Jews, Blacks, homosexuals, etc., are perfect scapegoats precisely because their persecution is socially sanctioned. The spree shooter, by attacking these minorities, catches two birds with one shotgun. For the first time in his life, he feels that he belongs, that his conduct is socially acceptable and peer condoned, and he vents his fury on easy, vulnerable, and essentially risk-free targets. During the attack, during the spree shooting, the spree shooter feels elated, and his anxiety is relieved and abated. Contrary to pers persistent myth, the shooter is aware of his environment, but he suspends morality, judgment, and his sense of danger. The shooter usually takes his life as an act of defiance, not of desperation. By committing suicide, he renders himself out of the reach of the law. His suicide is a grandiose gesture, sort of twilight of the gods. At the same time, self-annihilation tends to uphold the shooter's view of himself as worthless, as an eternal loser, an incorrigible failure. The timing of the spree shooting is usually determined by a life crisis, losing one's job, divorce, incarceration personal bankruptcy, the death of a loved one or a significant other. The spree shooter often hits rock bottom before he erupts.